This guide will be intended for anyone who either hasn't played Storm Spirit at all and wish to learn, or have played only a few matches and would like a focused approach on mastering the hero. Naturally, let's assume that you more or less know what Storm spells do and seen it in your games. For the purpose of this guide, it won't matter if you're an Archon or an Immortal player, my points will be mostly focused on the proper habits and ideas rather than how to execute intricate plays. However, the more experience you have with the game as a whole, the easier it will be to learn the hero. Likewise, lower MMR people who have accumulated quite a lot of games on the hero might find some useful pointers in here too. Let's begin. Our first habit while playing Storm will be quite the easiest one to keep in mind and execute. You will want to practice clearing any wave or camp with just two remnant hits. Knowing how to distribute the damage and clear the targets with as little mana wasted as possible is the first step in mana efficiency habits. Every level you gain will change how you can approach a cluster of creeps and eliminate them. Practicing the skill set can be done in bot matches or just loading up the demo mode in between queues. The spirit moves me. Without a doubt. Let's go. Second, while laning, it is important to always be able to execute the vortex combo as early as level three. In theory, it is quite simple. Pull the target, hit once, cast remnant, hit once, remnant explodes. About 300 damage when done correctly. In practice, there will be additional varying factors such as distance to target, the direction the target is facing, and movement speed differences. To make sure your spells connect successfully, make sure you begin the combo when the target is facing you, and cancel each animation while moving closer between actions. These restrictions naturally loosen once you acquire additional movement speed, use Vortex from Ultimate, or put a second point into the spell. But seeing as there will be many opportunities to use the combo during laning, practicing such move is highly advised. Perfect the combo in live matches or 1 vs 1 mid practices. Now let's talk about your power spikes. A power spike is a sudden increase in your ability to do certain action or actions. Power Spike can be a new skill, talent or an item. For Storm, to put it very simply, each level on your ultimate is a massive Power Spike, and we will want to play exactly around such Power Spikes. With the first one at level 6, you gain kill potential on the enemy mid laner if the matchup allows it, such as Storm vs Shadow Friend. Second Power Spike at level 12 doubles your ability to jump to places and deals more damage upon connecting with any target. And likewise, at level 18, it doubles again to what it was at the previous level. I will elaborate on those power spikes in a second, but let's also mention the power spikes gained through items, as they can be game changing too. An early orchid gives you kill potential on most enemy heroes, Bloodstone gives essential regen, allowing you to do more with your mana pool, and BQB lets you initiate first and take out key targets. And lastly, runes create power spikes on their own. Double damage at level 6 will let you kill almost anyone, and arcane rune at level 25 means death to any solo hero that overextends on the map. Now why am I telling you all this? Because Storm, unlike Ember or Void Spirit, should only add new playstyles and objectives when reaching the next power spike. Ember and Void, they get level 6, they unlock their mobility, they can attempt a kill on the opposing mid laner, or they can travel to the sides and cause chaos there. They are only limited by their cooldowns. Storm Spirit, on the other hand, has no cooldowns, but is instead limited by his mana pool. So, just like there is gold and experience on the map, Storm Spirit essentially has a third resource, his mana pool. And mana management is a skill by itself. The more available mana Storm has, the more he can do in terms of mobility and damage. Thus, throughout early game, Storm's one and only goal is to increase either the mana pool or the mana regeneration, usually both. If you travel to the sides and fail a gank, you now have to spend a lot of time regaining mana, either through clarities, runes or a base visit. And during this downtime, the enemy can play more aggressively, because they know Storm is out of commission for a while. 
This is why Storm only wants to make plays when he gains a power spike that directly improves his mana resource management. Now, let's return to my previous point of major power spikes happening at level 6, 12 and 18 and see how we should ideally manage our movements on the map during each one of those periods. First up, level 6. At this point, in most cases, you gain the ability to either kill the mid laner or dodge mid laner's kill attempts, either option allowing you to free farm in the middle. Depending on specific matchups, you will either control the mid lane or add jungle creep rotations to your farm. This is where you will want to spend majority of your time until level 12, around the mid lane, focusing on the mid towers, runes and nearby camps. Only venture out to the sides if you got a good rune, a tower needs saving or the outpost timing is near. By level 12, you should ideally also have Kaya, and your engagement circle has just expanded from only a small area around the mid lane to about a quarter of the map. It is at this point where you can now continue operating around the mid lane or begin moving with your team, always farming nearby camps and waves in a jumping distance of whatever your team might engage on. Radiant just fortified. In between level 12 and 18, you should be soon getting either Orchid or Bloodstone, giving you a massive boost to your mana resource, allowing bigger jumps, more damage and faster recovery after any action. At this point, you should look for either pickoff potential or join the fights your team might be engaged in. By level 18, not only will your ultimate allow you to easily traverse half the map, but you should also have a defensive item option complete, and from that point on, Storm reaches its late game potential. Not only you can pick off weaker lone heroes, you also should have no problem initiating teamfights yourself, taking out key targets with ease, or at least making them waste bigger cooldowns. <laughs> Lastly, though rare these days, there is also the level 25 power spike where you should ideally have Hex or Bloodthorn allowing for global snipes on any hero. Now that we can more or less understand when to farm and when to look for fights, let's talk about fights themselves. Engagements can be divided into two categories, teamfights and pickoffs. Teamfights are pretty straightforward and easy to execute. You just show up, identify enemy strengths, weaknesses, then engage and disengage as needed. Playing Storm here is not that much different from any other core, so there's not much to talk about. What I do want to talk about are pickoffs. Here is where one can distinguish novice Storm Spirit players from experts the most. To technically execute a successful pickoff, Storm will have to identify a potential target, do mental calculations how much mana will he have to spend to reach the target, how much mana will he have to spend to eliminate the target, and how much mana will he need to escape the crime scene. All these variables swing wildly and depend on so many aspects that it is impossible to list them all. And learning exactly that to pick off targets will be your biggest journey as an aspiring Storm player. 
Before 100 games, you will see Ace Lark solo pushing a wave and won't engage him, because you know he can press Q once he sees you coming, dispelling your Vortex using ult and turning the gank around. After 800 games, you will recognize that if you do a big enough jump, wait for Slark to waste Q on creeps, you can kill him in one combo. And after many more than 100 games, as soon as you see merely an icon of an enemy hero, you will only take a second to factor in his current level and items, and have a good feeling how fast he will take to clear a wave and move on, intercepting him on his way. <laughs> and this pretty much sums up the entirety of Learning Storm. First half is mana management, second half is understanding pickoff potential. And this is what makes Storm Spirit one of the highest skill ceiling heroes. Invest a couple hundred hours in learning the hero, and you will begin seeing potential plays you never imagined yourself doing when you first started learning the hero. But it is a long road, and for each successful pickoff, you might first have to suffer a couple of failed ones. Now, to ease your journey into what your hero can and can't do at any given moment, if you have time and patience to spare, play bot games. Any difficulty you'd like, can be easy, can be unfair. The point of bot games is to teach you to jump. How far away from, in what direction, how much damage will you do, how soon will the target receive help, and many other small factors. You can easily control how long bot matches last, so you should have no trouble getting a good feeling of hero's limits at each power spike. And unlike live matches, if you horribly fail a jump and die, it is unlikely you will suddenly lose the game. It is a perfect playground for experimentation. I myself began learning the hard way in live matches, and I definitely did not utilize Tom's full potential until many many games later. Bot matches can help close that gap. But whatever you do, stay away from turbo matches, until you feel that you understand Storm's limits in and out. All turbo matches will give you is a skewed and inconsistent feeling in both mana management and pickoff capabilities, throwing you way off the proper timings you would feel in normal matches. Before we end, I'll also drop some general tips I mentioned from time to time in other videos. If you don't know what to build on Storm, and don't feel confident judging how the match might shift, the default and most versatile item order is Battle, Null Null, Threads, Kaya, Bloodstone, BKB, Hex. And you can always use my own Storm Spirit in-game guide slash build, link to it is below the video. Fare yourself clarities with every purchase. Whenever you have downtime not being hit by enemies, keep a clarity running, especially during early game. If you're not engaging a target or an objective, Walk. Lane to jungle? Walk. Mid to bottom or top? Walk. Rune will spawn in 15 seconds? Walk. Time walking is time spent regenerating mana, especially with clarities, and allows you to engage whenever necessary as close to max capacity as possible. The less experienced you feel with Storm, the smaller champs with your ultimate you should do. All the extra mana you will save from jumping shorter distances will allow you to disengage easier in many cases where you will be misjudging the situation. Only begin doing risky max distance jumps once you feel confident about the outcome. The journey to mastering Storm Spirit will have a lot of failed jumps, a lot of miscalculations, and a lot of snarky teammates saying noob Storm should you fail to solo carry the match. But once everything clicks into place, once you win mid, snowball, and the entire map becomes your playground, then you're rewarded with one of the best experiences Dota has to offer. This concludes today's topic. Thank you for watching, good luck. You can come out of that tin can anytime.